Chapter 6 discusses the article. It's placed right between the chapters about the first declension and the third declension. This makes perfect sense because the articles only use the second declension and the first declension. So these are definite articles. Greek does not know an indefinite article. For the masculine and the neuter, second declensions are used. For the feminine article, the first declension is used, and that will be the eta pure, but a singular, and the plural follows the one plural pattern, I own, I as. For the genitive, dative, and accusative cases, a tau is added to the beginning of the endings, and then for the neuter nominative, a tau is also added to the nominative endings, to, ta, and the masculine and feminine have just naked endings, no taus. So be sure to uh, study these. Notice that for the masculine and the neuter, the interiors repeat, as well as for the feminine genitive plural that repeats as well. Um, and then, of course, you have to just memorize the nominatives. Now, because the third declension is not used for the articles, you'll see that when you encounter a third declension noun with a article, it will be joined to an article of like gender, but may not look alike. So that will take a little bit of getting used to. Okay, so a couple of observations. Of course, um, structure-wise, it can be used in an, ar an author's construction. That means a noun construction without an article, like here, apodoxes, eis doxon. This means that automatically an indefinite article is implied. So, if you would translate it straight up, it would say, from a glory unto a glory, but that's not really very smooth. So, the translators render it as from glory unto glory, or it can be articular, like so, tas basileas to cosmu. Notice that it is the plural, tas basileas, the kingdoms of the world, to cosmu, it's in the genitive, so we have of the world. Um, now, out of the heart, taste cardias. Notice not to confuse spelling with concord, because the articles in the feminine are all eta pure, whereas cardias, look at that, it takes an alpha. So you have to stick to gender and case here, not to spelling. Okay? Um, of course, it's very helpful to have the articles. They're going to be your best friend. Article location declares noun location. The article is not always found right before or right after the associated noun. In that regard, of course, it's not like English. Look here. For the work of the Lord, you notice that the word gar splices the ta ergon. So, the work has gar in between there. Gar is a postpositive or a conjunction. So in the translation, we bring gar up front, but we know from the concept of concord, grammatical agreement, the ta and ergon goes together for the work of the Lord. Now specificity. Articles can specify, especially a definite article, of course. So um, we can add specificity, not just any kingdom, but a basileia the kingdom. Sometimes we don't translate specificity, like ha Jesus. we don't say the Jesus, we leave it untranslated. The same for God, we just say God, not the God, there's only one God, two theus, not of the God, but of God. And a agape, an abstract noun, is just love, not the love. Uh, we also have this concept of an author specificity, um, because some words are just inherently articular, like sun, there's only one sun in our universe, or God, there's only one God, law, one Jewish law. You can also use the article for grouping, article roundup, where you rope in concepts. Um, 
like with our prepositional phrases. We also have the idea of article repetition. Look here. Ha naos tu theyu ha ein to urano. So ha naos is in the nominative. And then you see after tu theyu another nominative article. But none of the other nouns are in concord with it. Tu theyu is in the genitive. To urano is in the dative. So what in the world are we going to do with the second nominative article here in the masculine? Well, that also is in concord with naos, so it's a repetition. The temple of God, the one, still referring to temple, in heaven. So we smooth it out as the temple of God, which is in heaven. Now it's really specific. Or we can recognize article pairs, but you must make sure that you keep them in concord. Notice here how it uh, is spliced up. Theis zoes goes together. See that? And two cosmu goes together. So sometimes they splice them in the middle. We also speak of antecedent reference, where you have this idea of something being introduced generically, like Bob went to the kitchen and got a plate. He then took the plate. Now we know specifically what plate he's talking about. So we know that in English, and the Greek does that too. For example, in the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew introduces the wise man as the Magoi, no article, wise man from the east came to Jerusalem, we don't know which ones. Then just a few verses down from that, he says, Herod secretly called for the wise man, because he says, tus gamus. Now we have specificity because we have a definite article. We can also use it for substantive substitution as a personal pronoun. And he said to them, notice that there is ha, not a personal pronoun. So it can take the place, we use he because it's a masculine pronoun. We can also do the same thing for demonstrative pronoun. Demonstrative pronouns point, this or that, or in the plural, these or those. If they stand by themselves, they substitute for a noun or a pronoun. Look here, now Peter and those with him. Ha, Petras are in concord, right? It's the nominative, Petras, and there's a nominative noun. But that's one of those we don't translate because it's a proper noun and a proper name. But hoi, the plural nominative uh, article here, stands by itself. It's a substantive. It takes the place of a personal pronoun. So it's in the plural and it points. It takes the place of a demonstrative pronoun. That's why we translate it as those. Now Peter and the ones or Peter and those with him. All right.